My name is Annie Hoog. I'm a research psychologist at the Danish National Research Center for the Working Environment. When I supervise graduate students, I always tell them that uh, when they do a confirmatory analysis, it is not enough that they state the hypothesis before they look at the results. They also have to state exactly how the hypothesis test will be performed. Now I will explain why this is important and how a failure to comply with this principle may lead to false p-values and falsified research reports. Consider the following example. We want to test the hypothesis that there is an association between social isolation at work and backache. To our disposal, we have a data set obtained through a questionnaire used on a representative sample of a certain population. Before we perform the test, we make the following decisions. We will use a logistic regression to test the hypothesis. The significance level will be set at 0.05. The outcome will be based on the question, do you currently suffer from backache, which could be answered with either yes or no. The explanatory variable will be based on the question, is it possible for you to talk with colleagues when you are working, which could be answered with one of the following reply categories, almost all the time, approximately three quarters of the time, approximately half of the time, approximately a quarter of the time, seldom or never. The explanatory variable will be dichotomized. Since there are five reply categories, there are four possible cut points to choose between when we do the dichotomization. Our strategy is to try all dichotomizations and use the one that, which gives the best result. Let's say that one of the dichotomizations renders a p-value of 0.048. Let's also say that we have forgotten that the cut point of the dichotomization was not decided upon until after we had looked at the results. Since the p-value is below 0.05, we can now report that we found a statistically significant association between social isolation at work and backache. This p-value is, however, false. There is no association between the examined variables uh, than for any given dichotomization. The probability that a p-value will be less than or equal to 0.05 is 0.05. But the probability that at least one of the four dichotomizations would yield a p-value that is less than 0.05 is much higher than that. I recently performed a Monte Carlo uh, simulation, which is a test of repeated random sampling to estimate parameters and probabilities, where I found that this probability was equal to 0.16. In other words, the true p-value would be more than three times higher than the falsely reported one. The moral to this story is that the ideal situation with regard to a confirmatory statistical analysis would be that 1. The statistical model is completely defined before the test is performed. 2. If the work is to be subjected to a peer review, then the peer reviewing of the methodology is done before the test is performed. When the results of the test have been obtained, the statistical model is not changed. Unfortunately, the above sequence and principles are seldom adhered to. The following sequence is, however, quite common. 1. The test is performed. 2. The work is submitted for peer review. 3. The reviewer, after having looked at the result, suggests changes to the statistical model. 4. The editor demands that the statistical model is changed in accordance with the reviewer's comments. 5. And it is surely a weakness to the editorial uh, process in most of our peer-reviewed uh, journals that we demand that the test should be performed and the results should be submitted before we begin the review process.